So uh, there are only three faces that I really cannot call names. And then, uh, so this uh, presentation will be informal. We're all old friends. Uh, okay, I really regret that uh, I said, uh, you know, I'll talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, uh, I really, you know, don't have the confidence, you know, to really give a lecture. Uh, but uh, but uh, I'll do it anyway. So I want to make a, a very simple introduction, right? So I, I tell you guys in this school, probably it should be like uh, Paul Wong or some of the other people, you know, uh, talk about this, all right? So uh, uh, because I don't know that much uh, or as much as they do. Uh, and then also I feel that uh, this is such an interesting topic, you know, I'm kind of disappointed, you know, uh, about the uh, lecture theories of the college, you know, so recently I don't remember yet, but, you know, really uh, those uh, advanced, uh, you know, people, you know, come to talk about this topic. Uh, okay, let's uh, start. So, so, therefore, I want to make uh, my presentation a little bit, you know, competitive, you know, like uh, in comparison with Paul Warner. So I put interior architecture here, and say, you know, I'll focus on that. Uh, okay, and then uh, parametric design. Uh, I believe it's, uh, it's something that uh, you don't want to ignore. It's very similar to, uh, to many years ago. I tried to tell myself, okay, so this is, uh, what is this? Anybody recognize? This is Zaha Hadid. In the early years, she was doing this, uh, you know, crazy paintings. I said, okay, you know, so this is so saying, it's no future, right? You know, that's hard to do it. And then, you know, I don't have to pay any attention. I know it's beautiful work. Good for a living room, you know, on the wall. But uh, now, probably, you know, we cannot, you know, ignore her anymore. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, so this computer generated beautiful forms. Okay, and then probably, I would say five years or ten years uh, before, and then we just say, you know, so these are only for paper architecture, that sort of thing. You know, we never get built. Okay, so this is actually, you know, uh, the work of uh, a, a guy named uh, David uh, Gerber. And then, uh, so, uh, uh, he actually worked for Zaha. And then uh, so now he's teaching at uh, uh, USC. Uh, and uh, uh, something like that. All right, so this is more recent parametric design. No, no, I may tell myself, okay, so these are you know, architect stuff. So we don't do that in interior. Okay. Because uh, I believe that they couldn't really figure out you know, why they do it you know, inside these things. You know, look great, you know, outside, right? You know, so how do you, you know, fit all this furniture in? Okay, so therefore, don't worry about it, okay? And then uh, until this day, all right, I was totally shocked. And then I was, okay, no, you know, we have to look at this sort of thing more seriously. So this time is 2009, March uh, issue of Interior Design Magazine. Okay, so this is the Kanto room in Los Angeles. Okay, and uh, designed by uh, 
Feldberg architect. All right. But, you know, I'm not really sure on you know, this. Is this a really a parametric design? So this is, you know, of course, it's a beautiful form. Usually, you know, probably uh, at the time, you know, I could not figure out how to do. Okay, but uh, probably, you know, we can you know, make something like that. So is, is there any other, you know, deeper meaning of this? Uh, probably, but uh, we need to take it seriously and look into it. And then, uh, fortunately, in 2008, I kind of, uh, you know, heard of the word, and then uh, I invited my friend, Professor uh, Xu Weiguo, you know, from China, uh, to ILTU, and then he actually gave a talk about what this is all about. So this is the first time I seriously sit there and then listen to somebody talk about parametric design. And then he also uh, brought here a exhibition of uh, the student work uh, from China. And then uh, so that was uh, in the basement of uh, the UTLC. And then uh, so, but that actually, you know, uh, got a lot of attention from students. You know, at that time, the student, you know, we have a student publication, you know, architecture. And then uh, they actually, you know, wrote an article about that exhibition. And, you know, being kind of touched by uh, the kind of the good work done by the Chinese students. And then uh, let's uh, get down to business. Okay, what is parametric design? Okay. We have the people here already, you know, taken uh, classes from Paul. Probably you know, you know something about it. But uh, I'll try to to uh, make it simple. So the first one is what is parametric. Okay. And then uh, so this question can be answered is that it's something about uh, parameters. And then uh, you may want to continue the question. Then what is uh, parameter? The problem is actually are simply factors, right? So, uh, you know, the factor about what? It's a, the factor that will influence a system. Okay. So, what is a system? The system is uh, a whole thing. You know, it's a little part, but they are all related. Okay. I think uh, the so-called the system approach or system thinking uh, was really, I uh, hope, or became important when you know the Americans you know try to send you know people uh, to the moon, and then uh, so they got this project and they figured out you know everything related to that you know, should be really really good, and then you can you know send you know people to the moon. Otherwise, then there's a little screw and then screw up, and then they will burn or explode, whatever the bad thing will happen. So therefore, so everything is related, and then it's a system, and then as many factors will influence it. So this is parametric, okay? And uh, so uh, all these parts are logically related. <coughs> And uh, so this is my understanding of parametric design. And then another kind of a frustrating thing is that, uh, well, so my friend came from China to talk about it, but you know I could only understand half of it because uh, they usually you know talk about philosophers, okay? And then uh, there's, there's philosophers you've never heard of, okay? And then uh, so all this philosophy is talk about you know, full. I don't really you know, still I don't put a figure on what what is that full you know they talk about when they talk about parametric. And uh, so therefore you know, my intention is to really simplify it, you know, give it a, a human human understanding of it. So so this is my simple understanding of that. So uh, therefore, you know, this idea or this thought you know can be applied to our design. So in your design, it's a system, and everything relates. And then uh, so you need to control those factors, and then uh, so you can generate actually the final form of uh, the design. And then there is also 
a historical perspective. Okay, well, we can start with modernism. So uh, people looking for simplicity. And uh, it's rational. And then later on, we have this post modernism. It's looking for a complexity that is kind of uh, arbitrary or irrational. Uh, and then uh, we have this parametric. And then, so this is uh, a rational systematic complexity. And then uh, I want to go a little bit more further, you know, for that. It's this, uh, so, you know, what is this for? What is the rational systematic complexity for? And you can better make your design fit for human use. I think that should be the purpose. If uh, you don't care about that, and then so you are just uh, you know making some fancy forms, and I believe you know a lot a lot of people are doing that. Okay, so if you don't pay attention to what you are really doing, how it will benefit you know people, the society, whatever, and then uh, so you are doing something wrong. Okay, and then also many of the books you know talk about this uh, recognize this. So this means to you. Uh, power greatly, and you can you know, get into it, you can not get out of it. All right, so let's uh, you know look at the, the modernism. So we have the Mies van der Rohe, you know, simple, and uh, or less is more. It's actually you know it's not it you know, look very simple, but it, it has a lot of things in it. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, Venturi, and if uh, you follow the steps, you know, you will run into the wall. Okay, and of course, you know, there are other things, the meanings, all that things, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, we talk about. But uh, so that is uh, the complexity. And then uh, we have this deconstruction. Uh, can we turn off the light? <laughs> okay. Okay. So this is uh, Peter Eisenman. The construction complexity, okay. uh, and uh, and then we have uh, Frank Gehry complexity. Okay, but uh, you know usually people say uh, his work is not really parametric because uh, it's uh, almost purely purely uh, sculptural, and then uh, more of. Uh, his work, but you know this kind of uh, you know interesting form, uh, not really a boxy design has been going on for a long time. Okay, so this is uh, uh, 1877. Gaudi, and then uh, 1906. Gaudi again. And uh, 1924, <coughs> Steiner, and then Ron and uh, 1954, uh, TWA Terminal, Saruman, 62. Cancel painting, Olympic gymnasium in Japan. So this is outside. I think this one is kind of close to her And then uh, 
से में मर्सिडीज बंस म्यूजियम यू एन स्टूडियो एंड एनीबडी नो व्हाट दिस इज ऑन अ फर्स्ट लुक एट इट्स हाउ दिस टेंपल ऑफिस so this is uh, i believe this is very important okay so uh, this is the the plans of uh, greg lins uh, and and biological house study okay and then uh, he actually uh, built uh, from a very simple sphere at the starting and then used uh, all these uh, computational rules and to de develop these little cells and then to see you know how com complex it can go and then uh, so these you know just imagine that you can you know, de develop this many into houses and then to meet the requirement of different people okay so let's see you know what kind of points you know you want to make you know from this i believe you know this is really important okay so uh in comparison we compare it with modernist idea mass production of forms based on uniform models okay so that is uh, what of you know people have been doing uh this mass production okay and then uh, so what's important for you know correct wings uh work is what is so called mass customization and uh, so this is the power really of this whole parametric design movement it's uh you know so why is that because what is really the mass customization is the mass production of individually unique products so the products is based on potentially unlimited iterations and then derived from a basic form so in this case you know is the original little sphere and then uh, got it in different form and then supported by cnc the computer controlled manufacturer and then also so this is kind of important because of this thing is supported by the technological development of the society. And I look at this, and it's now we understand what are the beams of okay. Uh, and uh, so I think that is a really key thing, you know, for us to understand, you know, what the parametric design is all about. What is the meaning? Of it. Okay. If you are only you know looking for fantastic fancy forms, probably you are looking at the wrong direction. And then if uh, we use that kind of idea to look at this again, so this uh, you know the triangle is really the basic unit. And then uh, by you know changing it, and then uh, so you can make very complex uh result very you know so this is uh you know the design is uh, i think it's pretty good it's uh, the nightclub uh, you know, the, the latin uh, passion okay this is really really so and also it made me you know relate to uh, this book and uh so uh wayne is still uh have my book and he told me that he's reading it uh, so uh, you know so this book actually you know tell something you know quite important you know the changes in society you know how uh, is this uh, you know says you know how uh, the uh, work leisure uh, you know, uh, everyday life has been changing you know this this you know very simple summary i will say is talk about the importance of individuals 
and then also in the past, probably you know, 30 years before. And then uh, what's important is the big corporate, okay? But not the individuals, the creative individuals. They call them creative class, is the common one part. And empowered by internet, all these, uh, you know, digital technology, you know, CNC, you know, that's why you can do different things. And then plus uh, the 3D printing, okay? So, uh, in the past, you know, my understanding of the 3D printing is that simply, you know, you can, you know, do a little box and then you can, you know, print out a, a cup, all right? So it's plastic, right? And then so what you can do is you can make it a, you know, use it to make a mold and then you can build other things. Okay? But now it turned out to be, you know, I talked to my friend in industry, they say, no, you know, you can directly flat out metal parts, you know, to do things, okay? So, uh, so that's, uh, you know, this world is very different, the technology changes, and then so there's something fundamentally uh, For interior people, okay, so, you know, if you look at the, the office space, and what has, you know, it's changed really, really, really a lot. All these cubicles are almost, almost gone. All right, let's uh, continue. All right, um, uh, so what is this? Dinosaurs. So dinosaurs, right? Do you remember the name of this guy? What kind of a, I don't have a name for this, right? But does it not? Dinosaurs. Okay, and then, uh, so, uh, why I'm showing this, because I think, you know, this is a, first it has looked, looked like uh, many of the parametric design project, right? And uh, I think this is the best parametric design because it's uh, actually done by God, right? So if you believe, uh, you know, God created you know, everything. And then uh, so by many, many years of iteration, and then uh, adapt, you know, to the environment, and finally, you know, get this. You know, because, uh, the, and then, uh, so, 2008, we got my friend here, and then in 2009, we went to China, joined him on the workshop, you know, training people to do that sort of thing. And then the second part of it, actually, came to LTU, and then to use the CNC and uh, the 3D uh, plotting. And then uh, we also traveled to New York City and then uh, in the Museum of uh, Natural uh, History or something, we found this, uh, this skeleton. And then we thought, wow, this is parametric design. You know, look at the, the tail, for example. So this is the similar parts and then uh, changes according to the different knee, okay? So how, how much weight on you know, the tail of it here, and then this is the difference, or is it bigger to support it, and then uh, so on. Okay, so uh, and then uh, you know this is uh, my interpretation of uh, iterations. You know, right? You know, from the fish, and then you know, come more and more in this uh, all these years, and you get to this. And I will say, you are probably the best uh, parametric design as well. Okay, so if uh, somebody asks you, what is parametric design? You know, you can point to yourself, you know, I am, so because of this, right? And uh, so, uh, you know, if uh, we look at uh, some design work, uh, furniture, for example, also this one is somebody, uh, uh, done, you know, that uh, adaptive uh, adapter, and then, you know, I don't believe this is really good because uh, it will be really hard for anybody to sit, you know, somewhere here. And, uh, but, uh, so this, uh, why I'm showing this, because it make a very important point. So this parametric design is, uh, is for adapting to the environment. It's related to the site, uh, you know, the interior space, whatever, uh, and then uh, so and all these things will make an impact <coughs> on the design. 
by this relationship. Okay. Uh, and then also now uh, I'll show uh, some of uh, the thing, the things that we have done, you know, in this particular uh, interior program at LPU. So, uh, so this is uh, one project. Uh, uh, two of uh, the uh, uh, three plus uh, interior design master student work. And then, uh, so the focus is on the ceiling. And you can see this is a fancy ceiling floor, right? But uh, we have some kind of, uh, you know, uh, process. Okay. The process is that uh, we analyze the, the space and then to see where are the furniture. Okay, so this is a lighting design competition. And uh, so uh, we assume that you know, where the furniture uh, are placed uh, will be the center of human activity. So therefore they need light. And so we put light bulbs above them. And then uh, we analyze the circulation pattern. So the circulation needs lighting. So therefore we put lights there. And uh, after that, we kind of, uh, you know, uh, did a calculation using computer, right? we, or we can call it a simulation. And we generated the in the floor, on the floor, the, how many foot candles we have, you know, all there, got all the generated, all these numbers, and collect all these numbers, and then use it as a representation of human activities. And then now we put into the software. Now everybody knows Grasshopper. Okay, so this is a boom thing. And then uh, so we generated this geometry for the ceiling. And then uh, make it out and then finally ship out to AutoCAD and then chop it into pieces. And then also that is the result of the seeding pattern. And then this is the second you see the up and downs. And then also we feel that, okay, and also this is a, a system. And then also it's informed by the human activities. We use the, simply the lighting simulation as a tool. Uh, to make that connection. And uh, so this is actually Karen's project. So this is the little uh, sample room on the third floor. Okay, probably you have uh, used it uh, in the past uh, for IDS2. And then uh, the, the idea is that we want to create a fancy ceiling, okay, Metric and then uh, using all these laminate, uh, laminate uh, chips, you know, hanging there to form that beautiful cloud. Okay, and uh, so instead of we want to, you know, make it uh, meaningful. Okay, and then uh, so uh, we have uh, we did the same trick. Okay, actually, so we put uh, the light meter grid on the floor, and then uh, we put the uh, uh, lighting simulation, and uh, you can see the windows here. So the sun will come in, and then uh, this uh, red color means a higher level of light, and then reflections and whatever over there. Okay, so. Uh, we did the simulation for different days, uh, at different times, and then added up all together to have a comprehensive representation of how much light the floor will receive. Okay, <coughs> based on our understanding of the human nature, so we like light. So if uh, anybody doing anything, that way, you will do it here because that uh, has more light. So probably you know you will not do it in the upper uh, right corner. 
to the disease life. And then also, uh, based on this assumption, okay, so here we need a bigger space in order to make it appear to be bigger. So that means if we can have a higher ceiling, we'll make this spot more important. Okay. So that is the logic you know, for us to figure out where we curve the ceiling. Okay. And then we did this. So this is how the data is combined. And then this is how we did the ceiling grid. And then use the data we got from the simulation. And then got the point in space and in Rhino. We generate this form, and then based on the reality, so we have the ceiling only 10 feet, and then we cannot drop it you know, 5 feet down, so we'll get into here, you know, to 2 minus 50, so therefore we reduce the, uh, the depth of it, and finally get it uh, partially install. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh, uh, what we have done in the past, you know, about this. And we think uh, we generate a pretty interesting idea. And then in this college, we have make lab. Okay. And we have seen all these interesting things going on in all these corners of this building. And then, uh, so, uh, therefore, I suggest, you know, everybody in here program to take the James Stevens digital fabrication and then try to wrap that. Okay, so here I want to give you a very simple uh, example of, uh, you know, to, for you to understand. This is your last chance you know, to understand what uh, parametric is. Okay. Uh, so this is my example. This is uh, in China and uh, uh, we have this dividers, you know, in the middle of the street. Okay, so uh, here you can see, you know, this divider is different height. So that's a, the lower there and the higher there. You know, so why is that? Okay, and uh, so uh, you know, why do you know, because uh, these people are jaywalkers, right? You know, so they just you know, jump over and you know, try to get to the other side of straight. So therefore, we have to make it. Uh, Make it up, right? So therefore, I try to formulate, you know, this logic. Okay, the intention to jump over is the function of the distance uh, from the intersection crosswalk. If uh, you are standing at the crosswalk, you have no intention to jump over that fence, right? But uh, when you move over, if you are in the middle of the street, so the parts of where is the Way back there, using an automated shortcut, and it's a rental, right? So that, but uh, so therefore, so the divider height should be a function of this intention, right? So therefore, you will uh, make the middle of it higher, and then uh, so, the, so that curve, you know, actually represent that intention, and then so therefore. So this design of this divider actually adapt to the situation and to the site conditions. And then uh, so uh, it's a very simple example of parametric design. Okay. So uh, so uh, come back to this. The result, the height variations of the divider, right? And then uh, so another. Benefit will be less visual blockage at the intersection for drivers. And then use less materials. Okay, and then look good. And, uh, but, uh, you know, so the internal logic is something like that. So this is my end of my talk. I don't know if anybody wants to. Any question? Any questions? Okay.
So I plan a little demonstration of Reynold grasshopper or doing this divider. If anybody is interested, if you know, I already know that. So I think I have to stay. If anybody is interested, so I will do it. If nobody wants to see it, I will quit. You want to see it? Okay. All right. So that's a very simple one. What? Yeah, I'm teaching, right? This is part of the class. All right, so this is uh, Rhino, okay? Rhino is, is actually very simple. If you know AutoCAD, probably you can make it work. So you can, because it's very similar. You type in command, and it, it will do things. Because uh, Rhino used to be a plugin for AutoCAD, so therefore, they communicate. All these uh, AutoCAD commands usually work, if you want to draw a line, just type in line, and then it will ask you your first point, second point. All right, so I made that the first point, or the line, that I type in line, and then even you don't, you don't need to try to find where the line tool is. And then you type in. If you want to copy, you just copy, probably not going to copy for it. Uh, so, uh, so in here, I have, uh, I have a one line, and I have a little point. Okay, so this is my divider. Okay, so this is the point I want to use to indicate where the crosswalk is. Okay, so the same problem. And uh, so you need to call out uh, the grasshopper. Use public grosshopper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well spelling. Okay, my grosshopper. All right, I'll move it a little bit over so you can see. Okay, the line and point. And uh, I already made one, so I'll just show you. Uh, so. Alright, so this is uh, the result. Okay. Uh, So this will create actually a divider. So now I kind of uh, uh, make it uh, disappear. So now uh, so this is my divider. And so this will do that curve. But uh, I didn't do the complicated ones and then to, to make uh, the top all the same. Because uh, you have uh, the logic is here, so if uh, you get closer to the point, so you don't want to jump over. Okay, so the the divider can be low, and then also uh, you get up away from that, so you really want to jump. But you know the divider will be high. But if there will be no point you know, for you to create a 20 feet high, you know, bar to prevent people from jump over because they cannot jump that high. Okay, so uh, so here let's uh, let's. Uh, Hide it. Well, I'll start it from the beginning. Okay. So here I have something called the primitive. So this is in grasshopper. You know, this grasshopper, you know, 
and then the reality is two different worlds. The one is, uh, is physical, uh, and then the other one is abstract. And then, uh, so, uh, so this one, the abstract one, actually shows all these logical relationships. And then, uh, I think this is great, and then so this gives you really, or force you into the kind of thinking so uh, that away from the solid reality, you focus on the relationship. Sometimes this is very difficult. So now, in a way, in design studios, you know, we want you to do diagrams. It's not a floor plan, diagram. But many, many times, it's so difficult. And the difficulty is that you cannot, you know, get away from the thought, you know, so this is that room. No, this is not that room, okay? So this is, you have to think about your design in an abs you know, abstract type of way. So here, you know, let's force you to do that, okay? The first one is that I have to uh, create an abstract representation of my line. So this is a, called a curve, okay? So this one's not a line, so this is a concept. Right, so this is the curve. And then, but I need to make this curve relate to that. So therefore, I want to set a one curve. And then I come to this and click on that. So now, so this one is connected. If I click on that, see that one turn green. And then uh, if I click somewhere else, you know, that will turn that again. All right, so now I want to divide this thing into uh, parts. So therefore, I say curve. And then so this tool is uh, divide curve. So I put it here. OK, this little, little thing is uh, it's a function. And, uh, and then uh, so the first the C represent curve. So therefore, I drag out a connector. So now I'm related, right? You know, so then I have all these points up here or there. And then the second thing is n. So this is the number. You know, how many uh, segments I have, OK? So in order to make it more like uh, a variable, you know, you can control the factors you you can control. So you actually do a number slide. Okay. So number slides, uh, and you added it, you know, to define you know, what it is really. Okay. And then, uh, so uh, I want to uh, to say. So this is the floating point. The one is the integer. Okay, so because uh, I don't want to say I want to divide it three point five. You know, I, mean, I want it just uh, you know one two three four. And then uh, so I want it to be from uh, from uh, uh, one to uh, about twenty. You know, now from one to twenty, and now let's say okay. And then uh, so now I can link this one to the number. So now we have one. Okay, so now so I can control it. This is really fun, okay? This is really fun. Uh, and then uh, so what I want to do here is uh, I want to, to generate a little circle, you know, at the, all these points. And then I can extrude the circle into my divider bars. Okay. And uh, so therefore Let's uh, say I want to do uh, uh, so this is a look like a circle, and I get a circle. So the P is uh, uh, the base point of the circle, uh, and then uh, so that is the means the location of it. So you can see uh, all this uh, one has a circle. 
And then the R must be the radius, right? So, and then also I can, okay, so I will do uh, the primitives, and then I've got another slider on. So I can link it directly to here. So now I can control the side of the circle. Okay. And uh, so, you know, these things you can move, you know, I can you know, see if this one is related to this one. Okay. And, uh, and then also uh, I will do uh, surface. So there is something uh, called X2. Okay. And uh, and then uh, I will link this one. But this one is a direction. Okay, the direction is a vector, right? So, uh, so I have to find a vector. So this is the uh, z. So therefore, the column goes up to z, and the default value is one. Okay, so therefore, uh, and then uh, so if uh, I want to make it. Uh, more than one, okay, I'll copy this thing. I'll link it there. But, you know, so this will actually eventually be controlled by the distance, right? And then, so this is just to tell you uh, what you need, you know, to, so here, so I can change it, okay, at that point, you know. So usually you don't see this in all of that. Okay. Uh, but uh, here you have all these uh, different controls, you know, you can change this and you can change that. Okay, so now, you know, it's still uniform, okay? So we want to make every of those bars individual. Okay, so therefore, okay, what I need is a point. Because I have a point in the real world, I have a, you need a point in this world, okay? And uh, so uh, again, I say set one point and get here, click on it. Okay, that point at the, uh, and uh, so I need to figure out the uh, uh, distance, okay? This little tool, distance. From A to B. Okay. And then also uh, this one, the divide, the divide, gives you know all these points. So therefore, I link to that. So this will generate. You know, in this case, it's six because uh, you know uh, I have six points there. And then also uh, therefore. What I can do is to let uh, this vector know what I need for each uh, little bar. Okay, so I think now the logic is, is clear. I have a point, and then I want to figure out the, the distance from this point to each of these points, and then use it as the height of my bar to prevent people from running over it. Okay, and then also this distance also is a function of uh, the intention of people to jump over that fence. And then uh, so so this is uh, you know the display bar. Okay. Jim, yes. Making a script. This is a script. Yeah, so this is, you know, somebody called this script. So you are not really typing, you know, this uh, A equals B, you know, if, uh, you know, this, and then what, and then uh, all that sort of yeah. So this is, uh, uh, so this is uh, a different 
a graphic way of doing the computer code. And then, uh, you know, so this is actually, uh, I want to make another point in that, you know, the education, you know, we have now, it's not ready for this, actually. So why this happened is because uh, somebody, you know, made, made it for this stupid architect. So they only, you know, got training for drawing pictures. So they don't think, you know, in numbers, they don't know too much math, and then uh, so therefore they have to invent this for us. Okay. And then, uh, you know, if you look at this, there is something more Here is the last part, okay? And then, uh, so if uh, you look at this, right, I don't know how many people here in the architecture school know, you know, C++. Even a very few people know, you know, VB script. All right, so therefore, if uh, you really want to be good at that, you know, we have to, you know, somehow change the education system, you know, to figure out what we should teach, uh, you know, our student, you know, to really master this wonderful technology. All right, we haven't you know, got there yet. So, or we have to, you know, work in team with somebody from computer science or from ma mathematics, uh, and then so we can do really, really good things, right? And so now I can, what I can only do now is to link with little things, you know, to something else and have a little fun. Okay, how do you determine at what point, if, if, the, if the railing, the divider was all at one height, where people could jump over, um, at what point do you determine, how do you determine where they, and the distance from that first point where the crosswalk is, how do you determine the point at which they will first jump over the distance from the crosswalk to the point where they will jump over because they don't want to walk all the way to the crosswalk? How do you determine that? Okay. That, so, that's basically through observation, right? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't and really have a, a systematic study on that, you know, the human you know, how they actually work, you know, what is the height, you know, they will not, you know, jump or something. And then, uh, so, uh, so therefore, in this design process, one important step is how you translate the condition into, uh, into uh, values. Okay, and then uh, so you can, you know, build into the do that. So this, you know, for that part, you have to deal with people. You have to do some kind of a environmental psychology kind of study, and then based on that, so you can make this one meaningful. And then uh, actually, uh, when uh, Brett did uh, his uh, graduation project, uh, he tried to you know generate a beautiful form for the hallway in the uh, in the UT. PLC. Uh, and then what he did is uh, he actually uh, talked to the security people on campus and then so they actually have uh, cameras, you know, in the hallway recording people's movement. Okay, so therefore you should never do bad things there, you know, if you, if you are watch, okay? And then uh, so he actually, you know, there's a closet in the building, you know, they have this uh, recording there. And then so he got the tapes from it, and then so he actually looked at the, you know, how people walk, you know, in the hallway, and then uh, try to, you know, record it using the lines, and then uh, he finally got a like, group, you know, of lines, you know, that's all the how people move, and then uh, so uh, doing that, you know, he found some kind of corners and nobody ever touched. Okay, and then his idea is, you know, whether you can actually car carve it out or make that thing something else, you know, for other use. 
and then so therefore you can generate forms according to all these lines and then to make it work. So therefore, a lot of hard work, you know, have to be done in order to make it. And then one of the Tsinghua, you know, top project, you know, from Tsinghua of uh, China, and then uh, they actually uh, observed uh, the walk, you know, there's a like a bridge, you know, go over a street, and they, they actually, you know, calculate how many people, you know, what is the speed of people, you know, walking there, what direction they go, and they did it for a couple of days, and then uh, they grabbed some people from mass. Uh, school and help them, you know, to translate that that numbers, you know, into some form, and then finally generate generated a, a fantastic structure over that bridge, and then I'll show their points. So this is how the whole thing worked. Okay. Now this though, this could be generated in the Android. Fairly easily. Yes. It's it will come to the stuff that it right. just, it's yeah. at, at some level it's too much to try and right. comprehend it by your brain and your hand, so that it actually would be represented. Yeah. But uh, you know one uh, advantage of this is that uh, uh, sure, you can you know, generate this, this by hand, you know, no problem. But uh, if uh, I really wanted to see, you know, how many of these bars, you know, will will actually look fast, okay? That is a simple task. And then, so you simply now, you know, I have this this to play with. So you can you can do that in a second, you know, to generate just uh, 100 different versions of it. And then, uh, so if you draw in 100 version, you know, so that will be a lot of time. Okay. So, so now, you know, the power of this is that, uh, you know, so everything is connected, it's a whole. And then, uh, so if you just uh, change, you know, these things, and then uh, uh, that will, will change. And then, so you can generate all of these iterations of that by changing the conditions, the different logic, uh, and then, uh, Finally, generate the final design. Okay, so this is, I think that's enough. Any question? Okay. Well, I have a comment. Okay, so let's say um, the general parametric design of time to interior space. Um, to some example, you show that, for example, the C1 design. And usually, I feel like it's almost feel like it's uh, out of the context. Um, I feel like because you only develop this one element heavily and the other the other side of the let's say the four walls or the floor are not developed. So you feel like it's a foreign object in the space that you don't under design or totally design. So how do you think we can solve that issue? Okay. So this uh, uh you know, if uh, you really, you know, so this is a normal limit, okay? So this is how you do it. In this project I show, you know, because we only can do the ceiling, all right? And then, you know, we cannot really carve out the wall, okay? And then, so if, uh, if uh, that is really in your consideration, and then so you have to really understand, you know, what's going on, what is the program, how people will behave, and then uh, so you build all these factors into the system, and then you generate the GPT design, and then also you can make something really, you know, all the way, you know, going around that. And now, of course, you know, this one, you know, is not something, uh, if you do it, it'll be wonderful. And no, you know, this is you know, similar to any tool. There's a bad one, there's a good one. And then uh, so depending on how you use it. Okay, but uh, again, so this is a new tool. And then it opens up some new possibilities that uh, in the past, you know, it would be very difficult for you to even think about it. Okay, so this is uh, an opportunity. And then uh, so I don't believe you know, so this will really replace 
you know, all the conventional design approach. You know, probably a lot of people are still doing, you know, T square and all that sort of thing. And then, uh, so, uh, but, uh, but uh, you are actually, you know, in competition with this sort of thing. Okay, and then uh, so, uh, therefore, and then uh, there's the uh, possibilities that you can really, uh, you know, make the program fit, you know, the structure. And then so this is something important. Well, I think, I don't think it, in some of the images, it didn't just apply to the ceiling, like the one on the cover of interior design was the ceiling and then it was a vertical element, yeah. whatever that was, but that could come around and become the wall and become, you know, seating that projects out of the wall. And, you know, well, I think my main issue is where how this this um, realization of the of the design to me is more uh, less refined than let's say we some of the times, you know, out there they might feel like it's too technical for them. It's not like expensive enough or in a way, you know, maybe very expensive to build them, but they don't I don't know, it's, I figure I think there's a way to integrate both and maybe the material. Well, I think maybe, you know, if you have a client who is afraid of something like this, you don't show them this, you generate it, and then you, you know, render it in some way that, so that it doesn't appear to have been generated by a computer, and they can under, maybe understand it better without that as a thing in the background. But looking at the other question is how, how do we sell it to other people? And how? What's the probability of actually building? Well, so some there is a project. So okay. Yeah, there, it's it's taught in anybody. That's been true for since the beginning of time. You're going to only be so lucky to get a certain amount of clients that will go that way. Most of your clients are not going to be like that, and that's just that. That's nothing new. That's the history of the time. It's the history of time. So. You know, if that's your a direction you want to go, then you want to try and pursue it as much as you can so that you become known for it. But if you just sort of wait for a chance for it to happen, the odds are it's not going to happen very really often. And that's just reality. So it's something that you have to push through on your own and after years and years yeah. of hard labor, yeah. hopefully somebody will recognize you as that, as this thing that you do. And it's one of the things that the whole, I think only the few parametric designs I see is very refined and beautifully built as Tom Cadillac. His stuff is very, his design is very refined. But I was thinking maybe we, we can learn this process of how, how does he explore the process of making to really preserve the integrity of the materials and you know, make that the way. Because interiors, in the end as well, pay attention to deep times, creating experiences and all that. So, you know, this section. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, so here, one thing you, because you talk about, uh, you know, the finish. Okay. So currently, I think people are using a very primitive, uh, you know, material, you know, plywood or something, and the CNC and you know, do the cut it or whatever. But that's what they can do. Okay. But if uh, you are thinking about, uh, for example, using the more advanced uh, 3D printing to print out, for example, you know, so you can print out the wall. Okay. And then the finish can change, you know, at any point. Okay, so that means you know this wall can respond to the setting, the program at any point they need. Okay, so therefore it's not you know so this part is wall, is brick, and then you paint you know on this brick, or you you put a stone you know on the surface of it, whatever that. So that thing could you know could be a integrated whole, but you know now you know they can actually deal with the material at the molecule uh, scale. So if uh, that is uh, the things you can do, and then so you can really make something you know, far better than 
you know, the conventional technology can provide. Just uh, you know, think about you know, I you know why you use marble. Okay, because the marble is made in a kind of a parametric condition, created with beautiful patterns in it. But if, if uh, you know, you can plot out a marble and then so that give you the power of making it. Yeah, I didn't think about it this way, but our wave, the different that in a way, was a parabolic form. The only way we can do it in a quick fashion is to use fabric, but yeah. in the way it was hung and positioned, it could have been generated through um, a parametric. Yeah, so you, have, uh, you know, we have uh, advanced we did it by hand. Yeah, we did it by hand. Uh, it, it could be in the future, you know, I think, you know, the technology is going that way. Yeah. Yeah, because we are now, you know, making a plain parts, you know, simple like it's flatted, you know, flatted out, you know, metal directly. All right. Thank you, Chad. I have one last thing. Thank you. I think that was a really good...